All right, what is up? Welcome back. We're in the kitchen, and today we're doing some baking. I thought I would take this opportunity to also talk about uh, future holidays coming up, such as the, the year of giving gifts to people. So, fortunately, I'm here to help you navigate the troubled waters of film photography gifts, because it is a very deep and dark pool full of many pitfalls and things that cost probably more than they should. So what we're going to do today is discuss these gifts in a bracketed system in four categories. $15 and under, $25 and under, $50 and under, and then about $100 and up thereabouts. Nothing too expensive, nothing crazy. It's not gonna be one of those videos where I'm like, oh, get, get your film photographer friend the thing they really want, and then it's like a $5,000 thing. This is all very like reasonable gifts. Um, just something kind of fun to jazz up their Christmas and let them know that you support their unhealthy life choices. So for starters, in the $15 category, I would say, film. It's a great place to start. Most film is going to be around $15 or under for a roll of 35 millimeter uh, film. And I think really all you got to do is go to that person's Instagram page or ask them like, hey, what kind of film do you like to shoot? And then go pick them up a roll or two or three, depending on how much you like them. And I think that would mean a lot to them. I, I recognize that you enjoy my my stuff. Thank you for giving me the tools I need to continue to make the art that I enjoy making. Also, in the $15 and under category, we have filters. Um, I'm kind of putting this in there as like a, a catch-all, but filters are a great little tool to have in the arsenal where if someone's kind of feeling a little bit stuck in whatever they're they're doing, maybe a fun star filter. Maybe that's all they need to rekindle that, that fire that might have gone out a little bit. Also in this category would be camera straps. Now, a good camera strap is probably going to cost you a little bit more. Uh, the one I recommend would be like a ProTech neoprene, and that's going to be about 16 99 thereabouts, so kind of not at the $15 and under mark, but I'd say pretty close. Now moving up <coughs> to the $25 category. For starters, we have the camera wrap. This is a thing that Kodak just like recently introduced. Other companies have them, but Kodak's I think is uh, 20, or no, Kodak's is $17.99. And this is basically just like a little quilted moving blanket for your camera, and you can wrap it up and travel around with it. Um, I have one in the mail, so I will be doing a review of that soon and uh, let you know what I think of it. I'm kind of suspect to Kodak's quality control in terms of their more consumer-based stuff, but I'm hopeful because it does look kind of cool. Also in the 25 category, we have a film case, like a carrier case. There's a lot of different canisters and just something to kind of put a bunch of different film that you're taking with you. Again, it's a little thing, but it looks kind of cool. And if the person that you're buying for doesn't have one, it's just like a little fun thing that they can have to their collection. Uh, and then finally, in the $25 category, would be storage solutions. Uh, this for me would be huge because I have so many negatives that I've not done anything with. So getting binders, uh, some like negative sleeves would be huge. Um, and that's something that you could like kind of buy in bulk for somebody if you know, hey, I know you shoot a lot of film and you don't do much with it, so here you go. Here's a way you can store it. That'd be great. We have our $50 category. So this is like, things are getting a little serious, if you know what I mean. <laughs> that was to you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so $50. Um, this is going to be a little bit more of a catch-all for things. There's the, the long weekend gone film camera I recently talked about. That's like $49. There's a lot of other cameras in that like uh, reusable, disposable category that kind of fit into this. And that's like if you know somebody who has like one camera or like two cameras and you're like, oh, I just saw this thing that's kind of cool. It reminds me of you. Or 
It was just like, hey, I have a friend who likes taking pictures. Here's a film camera. Give it a try. I think that's a really good place to start for like a beginner, getting in the, the workflow, the process of buying film from somewhere, finding a place to develop it, and all of that stuff. Um, the next one on this list is something I think is kind of cool. It's a Reflex Labs like back display. It's a like a LED memo um, screen that goes on the back of a camera. That way you can display whatever kind of film you have in there at the moment. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, they're about 50 bucks, I think. I'll put pictures of them around here so you can take a peek. I definitely recommend checking them out um, for yourself, for your loved ones, for your friends, family, whatever. Um, they're pretty cool. And also Reflex Lab is a smaller company, so it's really cool to support them as well. And finally, in this grouping of $50 thereabouts, I recently got one of these, so I'm pretty stoked about it, but it's an Apache case. It's the Harbor Freight version of, like, a Pelican case. And they got the foam inserts, so you can, like, put your cameras in there and stuff. If you have one or two cameras, it's perfect for that. Um, and then you can get, like, a few of them, or you can get the bigger ones as well. But I just got the, I think it was a $39.99, $40 version one. I can fit a medium format and a 35mm SLR in there pretty comfortably have room for film and all that stuff. And it just feels better. Like I'm taking stuff out in the field. It's in a durable case. Uh, just makes me feel more prepared and ready for whatever can happen. Even though like nothing really happens, but like in case something did happen, you know, prepping and whatnot. And finally, in our $100 and up category, this one's gonna be a little bit more vague because when we're in this like $100 area, it's like you can spend money on these items but there's just there's not as much here as there is in like the cheaper or the more expensive. It's in kind of like a weird middle ground. One thing that I would say is like a tripod. That's something that's like I got a slick, I think 100, I think for I think 115 or something. Really decent lightweight travel tripod. I use that a bunch and uh just any kind of tripod in that category. Anything cheaper than 100 bucks, it's not going to be as great. Anything more expensive is obviously going to be better. Um, like more durable and stuff like that. But for a lot of like lighter weight, 35 millimeter SLRs, you don't need anything crazy. So I would say in that neighborhood, you're probably doing all right. And if they don't have a tripod, it, I think it's a great thing just to introduce to them. I like compact things that I can travel with. Um, but again, it, it kind of differs from person to person. This is a little bit more if you know the person more. The next one is the Ravini Labs light meter. This sits at about $125. It's a small little 3D printed module that just kind of sits in the hot or cold shoe of your camera. And it just kind of serves as a portable light meter for any of your cameras. And I just think it's, it's a great implementation of technology and kind of makes using older cameras a lot easier. I use my phone as a spot meter all the time, but this would give me the opportunity to leave my phone at home or leave my phone in the car, just have the, the spot meter on there and give that a rip. So for 125 bucks, that's a pretty good deal. And I think if you know, you're know you talking to someone and they're complaining about how their shots are underexposed or whatever, you just think it would look cool on their camera, then I would say that's a good, that's a good option. This one's again, kind of vague, gift cards. Uh, can't go wrong with that. Uh, if the person you know has a favorite Photoshop, favorite photo lab, uh, favorite type of film, any of those things, or they just want stuff off Amazon, just get them a gift card for, you know, whatever amount of money you think is fair. But ultimately, what I've discovered is that film, cameras, any sort of like artistic expression is very unique to each person. The tools they like, the tools they don't like. And shopping for people can be hard. And I think if you don't really have a full understanding of what it is they're looking for, but you can at least acknowledge and respect their desire to create in such an antiquated medium, then just get a gift card. Let them figure it out. Put the ball in their court for once. Um, but ultimately, don't look at me like that. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> a lot of sass from my cam up back there <laughs> anyway <laughs> gift cards those are always a good option um also in that hundred dollar price range um just get multiple rolls of film for the person too because i'm sure that they would love that as well 
but I would also recommend just like gift cards for a uh, photo lab. If they go to one that has gift card options, that's great. Uh, ultimately, those are all of my ideas for Christmas gifts. Um, if you have any that you can think of that you want to comment down below, I encourage you to do so. Check out the comments for other ideas, other advice, and such of that nature. Um, I will put links to all of the items I listed down below so you can check them out. And yeah, happy holidays. I'm going to go back to making these cookies and then I got to make a pie. So it should be lots of fun. I know we're both very excited here. So thank you so much for watching. Appreciate it as always. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you on the next one.